The following interview was conducted with John Y.D.C., Distinguished Craner Professor Emeritus for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, September 3rd, 2010 at his residence in West Lafayette. Yeah, Good thank afternoon. you. Well, thank welcome. You. <laughs> welcome. Okay, tell us a little bit about where you were born, your parents, and early years. Okay, I was born in Shanghai, China. And I was born March 25th, 1924. Okay. And, uh, and uh, my father's name is initial K-Y-T-S-E. Okay. And my mother's name was in the middle, uh, initial Y and a J, then Hua, H-W-A. And yeah. Uh, what business? What did what uh, did your father do? Uh, my father was a uh, importer of American lumber <laughs> into Shanghai. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, he had been in that all his life. Yeah. He, was he also born in China? Yeah, uh, he was. He was born in China. He uh, he was born in a city about seventy miles west of Shanghai. West of Shanghai, and uh, well, if you want to know my ancestor, I can trace back to 12th century A.D. Uh, to philosopher Zhu Zhu Xi. Okay, but by the way, my last name, family name, T.S.E. That is my father's native dialect. The way he spelled. The way he pronounced, and, and the T S E should be pronounced in his way. Should be pronounced as Yang Zi, uh, like Yang Zi River. Okay, the T D E T T S E. And uh, the standard spelling in China now is uh, C H U because that family name is pronounced Zhu, C H U. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. then. Uh, other people, okay, before the liberation, before they standardized, and uh, other people use the spelling of CHU, like the Secretary of Energy and the uh, Nobel Prize winner. He, he has the same family name, okay? So he, he spells CHU, okay? <laughs> and uh, therefore, yeah, and they, they also, based upon the native dialect, other people like uh, G A U G E E, like all kinds of spelling. Okay? And my father told me we were the descendant of Zhu Xi, Zhu uh, family name. Okay. Uh, and our then before him, five generations before him, uh, we our ancestor was in Shaoxing, uh, Zhejiang Province, and Zhejiang Province is just a province. Uh, south of Shanghai, and uh, then my mother told me uh, she had met some relative, distant relative uh, from Shaoxing, and when she was young, and that, that relative told her uh, we had a family shrine in Shaoxing, and uh, then our family used to own the Oak Mountain is uh, the name of the mountain. Okay, the Oak Mountain is a very famous place uh, location in, in in that particular province. Okay, so this I know, and I think so. When after I retired from Purdue in 19 uh, at the end of 1987 and 88, so I took my first trip back home in 38 years. <laughs> yeah, and I was giving lecture tours for me. Uh, and I took advantage of that. I didn't want to trace my ancestry. And uh, they were in, intend to go to Shaoxing, so I sent my, uh, my brother and my sister. Uh, they went to Shaoxing first for me and to make connections over there. And uh, the local government was very helpful and uh, found and helped. We couldn't find a shrine that was destroyed during the war, and, uh, but we did find uh, records in the county, in, in the County recorders. We have we have county records here, which we call deeds, mortgages, and all. Well, they got the county recorders and record the entire history of the county. 
okay. And uh, so from that, and then we found 18 abstract, abstracts of our I mean the same family, Su family. And uh, then half of them were descendants of Su Xi, what my father said, okay. And then among one of them, uh, uh, I think about in the 17th century AD, uh, AD was quite well to do. And uh, uh, well, according to the abstract, I mean the historical record, and that mountain got three names. One is in his name, Suwase. <laughs> Suwase. And so he is so well that he owned the mountain. So that proves my mother's point. Interesting. <laughs> and I'm very glad you had to do this oral history. You know, okay? These things are only passed over to me by oral history. And if I go to the any literature based upon the national history, I could not find those things. And only from the local historical records I found those. And I proved my if there are one okay, two things. One the local historical is unique in China in first place. Two it is oral history told to me by my father and mother. <laughs> gave me proof. <laughs> the local historical gave me proof to the oral history, okay? Right. That's what I got. And uh, then I got all of some names of ancestors earlier around Jesus Christ's time. Okay, and uh, but, uh, the local history of both things uh, only say, okay, these are the ancestors during that particular dynasty, okay? And uh, when, uh, that particular year, when I was in 19, I acquired a complete record set of Chinese historical records compiled by the national government. Okay, or all the dynasties in the past. So I say, let me look over here. I can't find this one. <laughs> and I, I did find them. And they were prime minister during that. All of them were prime minister or, or, or ministers during, uh, during their lifetime. Okay. And one of them had a descendant coming all the way down to the, uh, uh, this is before and after Jesus Christ at that time. Okay, that, that particular dynasty. They came all the way down to the 7th century AD and was the prime minister at that particular time. Okay, and that was a great discovery because that record was recorded in the so we call Tang Dynasty historical record at the national level. And uh, other dynasties doesn't have the record. And that particular dynasty historical encyclopedia got two chapters on the prime minister of that dynasty. Unfortunately, I have one. <laughs> and, and, and about the uh, uh, ancestry of each of the prime ministers of the Tang dynasty. And I, I looked it up, and I, I found, and I, found I, I got one, and I said, oh, oh, how did my family name start it? All the way down to him, okay, and then all the all the way down from him down to the end of the dynasty, and which tied together with my uh, local records, the name, okay, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, with, with the local, ah, uh, and then it started around Confucius time in around 487 BC. 487 BC. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, you BC. had quite a quite a good search. Yeah, I got to say, now, uh, this is how, how our family name started, and then uh, go back even further to 1050 BC, when the third dynasty overthrew the previous dynasty, and uh, then that the new emperor granted about a, a, a southern states, okay? And uh, because that new dynasty, and uh, the, the emperor, he was in the, where the Terracotta soldier is, okay, in, in that, on, on the west. And he is a, he was a descendant of Yellow Emperor, and half of the Chinese can claim Yellow Emperor it was our ancestor, okay? And he he was a descendant of Yellow Emperor. Then after he overthrew the previous dynasty, he went oh yeah. The Yellow Emperor was born on the East Coast 
山东旁边一条河，他就回的。The other emperor was, was born in the Confucius birthplace, same birthplace as Confucius. And he was on the west where the terracotta is. And so, so he went to the birthplace of the uh, yellow emperor, found a distant relative still there, okay, granted him a vacuum state. <laughs> Wonderful. And so, uh, so I actually gave him a vacuum state. A vacuum state of two, okay, a vacuum state of two, okay. Same, same pronunciation, I like what my, my name is, uh, is this way. And the name is the vacuum state of two, got a, a little half bracket over there, okay. This is how, how it got started. Oh, oh, that's interesting. And then from there, because he talk about yellow emperor, <laughs> got all the way back to the emperor. So just like, a, so I find, so my family wrote to Qing. I was able to find all the way to Yellow Emperor. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Okay, all the way back. Okay, that, that's what I found out. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about grade school and high school. Did you go to grade school and high school in Shanghai? Yeah, I, I got to grade school and high school in okay. Shanghai. Okay. Uh, okay. Was it a, a boys and girls uh, in the high school? Uh, okay. Uh, let me talk about grade school. Uh, uh -huh. Grade school, boys and girls together. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I, yeah, I call, I'll call, or I'll, I'll translate the English name is Plum Creek Elementary School. Okay. And my middle school is St. John's University. Uh, that's a boys' school. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. What was that like? <laughs> that's a boys' school, okay. Yeah. What, uh, yeah. Tell us about high and school. And the main, uh, my, College, St. John's University. Oh, yeah, St. John's Middle School is a part of the St. John's University. And uh, this St. John's University actually is an American school registry, Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay. And it's a missionary school in okay. Shanghai. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Do they have uh, American teachers or Chinese? They have American teachers. Okay. Did they yeah, have some Chinese? I if I, in, in my uh, in my high school, I got three American teachers. Uh -huh. Okay, I got a religious teacher, uh, Miss Brady. I got a history teacher, Perry. He taught taught me world history using Hayes and the Moon. Uh -huh. And I got a geography teacher who was a principal of the middle school in Norton, and uh, he teaches Chinese geography. Chinese geography. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, okay. Then you graduated from St. John's University. I graduated from St. John's University in 1940, Shang in Shanghai, in, in 1944. Okay. Uh, during, during World War II. Right. What was your major in, in uh, college? Uh, civil engineering. Civil engineering, yeah. Did, did you live on campus? I live on campus. I, 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 when I was in the St. John's Middle School, I live on campus already. Oh, okay. 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 I mean, uh, it's a boarding school, and it's like, like the prep school here, a private prep school here. Yeah, okay. I, I live on campus. Yeah, and start from the, uh, start from senior middle. I thought I got three years like, living on campus already. And then in the college, day, college time, I also live over there too. Yeah. Okay. Was the school very large, the college? Uh was your class very large? Uh, class, okay, let me, let me uh, compare against the Purdue, it's small, so I think it was uh, in, well, in the university. Many people have interviewed yeah. a bunch of smaller so, schools. Uh, three, four thousand students, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 high school, we got about, I think, uh, no, a university, I think, just about two thousand. Uh, middle school, uh, well, senior middle school, you know, just about four uh, four hundred students. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Um, was the the language of instruction? Oh, the language of instruction, interesting. <laughs> you know, that particular school, one of the reason, it's an English language school, except for the Chinese literature course. Yeah, we everything still, everybody everything to take taught that. in English. Okay. Everything is taught in English. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I think the English Chinese geography taught in English. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. But you said that the, you had some, what, American teachers in high school as well as some Chinese teachers? That's right, that's right. But they, uh, ex, 
except that's right uh, in high school yeah that's right yeah uh -huh. okay uh -huh. okay and then in the language in in college was also in english language of college and uh, this st john's in uh, in china uh, st john's uh, university. Uh, university. university okay is uh, probably i mean known as a the best English language university in China. Okay, so anybody graduate from John, they have all have pretty good preparation in English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, oh, by the way, uh -huh. I started to learn English in my fourth grade in my elementary school. Did they teach English in the oh, school? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. And they do now. Now they start to teach English, first grade. Okay. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, except for the, yeah, 70, from 1950, uh, well, okay, 1950, around the middle of 1953 on to 1979, so it's about 45 years, they really, really taught Russian, kind of thing. They weren't and teaching. Then, then, then after Teng Xiaoping opened up, they, re they went back okay. to teaching English. Okay. And uh, in, in the beginning, it's not... And now it's over over there. It doesn't matter where you are, even where you are in the country. I mean, uh, they even start to teach English on the first grade. Yeah, they had to get a lot of books in, in English too, didn't they? They probably didn't have a lot initially, or did they? They they they, they, they got yeah. I mean, they, they they have their own textbook. Okay. They they they, they have their own textbook. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. uh, now you graduated in forty four. That's the war. The war was still on. What did what did you do after you graduated? Well, well so I. Nineteen forty four. I went back to St. John to take some more courses. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, so I got, uh, that's right. And then when war ended and the business was restored and um, my father uh, used to work for, okay, he still, he worked all his life for uh, Robert Donna Company. And uh, maybe I, you, younger people won't know anything. You maybe you you may know something for your age. Huh? And uh, Robert Dara is a uh, uh, American uh, AP, American President Nine. And they they got he was a captain, oh, Scottish on the, on captain. Cruise ship. Ships, yeah, oh. that's right. And uh, so he got a Dara steamship line. That's how he started. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, got, they only got two divisions. One is steamship, uh, uh, ocean transportation, and the other is lumber. Is what? Lumber. Okay. They ship American, Oregon pine, Douglas fir, to to China. You see, so my my father had been working both divisions, and he was in charge of the lumber division. Yeah, uh, and then during the depression. Okay, because of recession, like, like what we were experiencing, we were worse than that. <laughs> we had. Okay, the shipping business was in trouble, like, so the government took it over. <laughs> they become American president, right? At least all the, uh, because all, all, all the ships are president of Ho and president by name, the corporate the American line. Right? And so. Well, Shanghai has always had a big port, it's always a port, right? Shanghai, Shanghai is a big port, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shanghai, Shanghai is the most cosmopolitan city in China. Okay. Yeah, in China, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Then, tell me, then you decided you went to Stanford? Uh, when did you uh, leave okay. China? Yeah, then what came next? I, I worked Just for my family uh, after the war uh, recovered, and my family, my, uh, actually, uh, my brother, you know, you know was, uh, was in this country. He got his PhD from uh, Uni University of Washington. Okay. okay, and then one of the uh, lumber exporter wanted my father to be their representative in China. Okay, and, I was, uh, and uh, so we formed our own family companies. And uh, my in father, China? Was, yeah, well, that's right. My father was the chairman of the board, and my brother was the general manager. So I'm, I was the assistant manager and treasurer. <laughs> Good, good. That's yeah, nice. that's nice. The yeah. headquarters were in Shanghai. Headquarters in Shanghai, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, my father knew uh, Mr. Stanley at home. I met also after I came to this country, and uh, they all 
longtime friends. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, well, tell us about then your graduate work at Stanford, and then I, I guess you went. I, I I I went to Stanford for, for my oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. an interesting story. I, I I go back to St. John's, okay? Yes. Because I studied civil engineering. I oh yeah. Civil I also, also went to my the things the thing has an engineering engineering uh, engineering firm, okay? Architect and in some. So I also went over there, maybe did some help and uh, uh, before I mean the. Uh, and uh, they, uh, uh, this is okay. Oh, I, uh, I got an admission to Purdue University for after World War II. For, to if, graduate? That's work? right, for graduate. If I came, if I came in 1946, uh -huh. okay, uh, yeah, 45 or, or, if I came in 1946, I would have come to Purdue for my graduate work in civil engineering. And I, you see, and, uh, uh, and also, I uh, also paid a deposit of two hundred dollars, <laughs> and then when I couldn't leave, I was working, <laughs> working, okay. And uh, hey. had you applied at Purdue, or did yeah, 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 my 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 sister Rowling did for me. Oh, okay, okay, she, she sent my transcript and everything over, uh, and I had a pretty good record, and so I got sure. it, yeah. And I think after work for oh yeah. 45, 46, 7, 8, uh, my third year. And I have everything, I, uh, the window of my down, so I decided my, uh, about time I should leave now uh, to continue with it. So I then went to visit with my old dean, who, uh, who became a president at that particular time, Creole Young, and he, 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 was, he had his education in this country, okay. And uh, to, to discuss what, uh, to get his suggestion. He said, yeah. Don't study civil engineering anymore. He asked me what I was saying. Oh, so I, I stick with my old idea when I was in college. I want to build transportation network and ships, railroad, highways. And <laughs> he said, no, no, no. With, with my family background, I, I shouldn't study that kind of thing anymore. <laughs> okay, I should study management. Okay. And, uh, oh, okay, you know, with, because his suggestion is what I did. So I shoot out two letters. Went to Harvard, went to Stanford. Uh, and, uh, he later comes out, hey, you pick up this stuff as well. Right? And uh, then with his letter of recommendation, with my record of St. John's, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty high I mean, in my ranking over there, okay? And then J. Hugh Jackson, Dean at the same time, Business School, he was very nice. He wrote back to me, John, we welcome you to come. And, uh, uh, but before the age, it'd be too late for the fall. So you, uh, because they already are, uh, came in 49, okay. Uh -huh. yeah, but they, then he sent me all the information, well, I have to do just fill out some forms, and so, so, so I'm officially out of the middle. Then Harvard is an MBA regular program, just like all these schools now. I mean, the admissions people, they send me application. Okay, you fill in an application, we'll consider you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I already got a bit of stand for. So I, I look at the catalog. It looks like I can get more for out of two years. So I went. So I went to Stanford. That's how I went to Stanford. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I did a quite well at Stanford. I first year, I think. But in the second year, uh, I, I, I wrote a, some kind of. No, well, they they are. Reporting the uh, courses written, okay. So I, I, then one of the, one of the uh, accounting professor, I mean, uh, suggest me to, I mean, uh, do some touching of my term paper and uh, submit to a contest of among some of six, seven, eight schools in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's, it's, it's the National Association of Cost Accounting, and uh, so he. And my CD in, I got, and so my paper was picked as the best from student uh, from Stanford, as well as the best from the San Francisco Bay Area six universities. Okay, so uh, uh, so he took me there, and so they give me membership in the in the association, and give me a book and all. Uh, okay, and all, oh. <laughs> and uh, then. Around that particular time, I decided what I'm going to do. Okay, I couldn't go back. 
comment already took over. Okay, so I have my so I decided I want a PhD. They never wanted me to stay because uh, Oh sure. Yeah, uh -huh. And I decided I at this time I would go to hard. I I do it again. So but 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 admission procedure for the doctoral candidates are different from the MBA at Harvard. Okay? They do they the doctoral uh, committee. And uh, the chairman happened to be in the same area where I wrote this paper. What? Well, <laughs> no, he said, you come over. <laughs> You're on the list. Yeah, right? okay. You're on the good list. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay, that's how I ended up in Harvard, okay. And, uh, and uh, then how we everything on case method. Stanford is half half, okay, and how we the uh, inventor of the case method. So, my so if I uh, learn pretty well, I mean, so I, I think I'm going to Harvard, I'm just not. So, I spent two years taking courses. So, I probably have more courses than any other student who, uh, I'm going you, to two, two schools, uh, Stanford and Harvard, you see. Do you have Harvard. to take some courses when you first went to Harvard? or? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah see, I, I took courses at Stanford for two years, yeah. I, and I took courses at Harvard for two years. Yeah. That's mean two years. And then, uh, and then, okay, and then the doctoral student have to master six field. Okay, so I, and uh, so I passed, I mean, uh, all five, before I start our dissertation, the dissertation, and then the professor admitted he was my major professor. So then I, okay, so uh, 53, so I start to, on my dissertation. And then that year I got married. Okay, so I got married. Where did you uh, meet, where'd you meet your wife? Did you meet her at Harvard? Oh, uh, well, actually in Shanghai. Okay, so you knew her from Harvard. I knew her, okay. and uh, because she, her sister married my roommate and classmate. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, so I am, well, I didn't date her. <laughs> but you but know I her. know who she is, she knows who. Sure, sure, I understand. Yeah, okay. Good. And after I get to Harvard, and uh, they, they happen to be, they are living in Maine. So I visited with them f first, the Emma's sister and, the, and my brother in law, okay, so I visited with them. It, it was all her sister. Okay, <laughs> so that's Thanksgiving uh, holiday. So, so when uh, uh, oh yeah, the, my, my sister also okay also went to Stanford, and then uh, we both graduated the same time. And she was an undergraduate; I got the main MBA, and uh, and she went to Columbia, and I went to Harvard. Okay, and then so I I went to New York to visit with my sister, and. Uh, so Emma's sister came to New York to visit, and uh, they came to visit her sister, and uh, so we went in together. <laughs> Very nice. That worked out. Yeah. Very good. And uh, then, uh, so that, okay, it was 60, uh, no, 51, that mm -hmm. was 51. But then we were married in 53, you see, we were married in 53 after I uh, passed all, everything, except for the, I have to write my dissertation. Sure. And uh, things I have to, you know, the Mary, I figured, well, I better get a job. <laughs> so, here yeah, I got all these accounting things, so I sent an application to, into uh, Libran, Ross Brothers, and the Montgomery an accounting firm, okay? And then it is actually the, the top four ac accounting firm in this country. The American ones, Libran was the top one. And then the British one called Price Waterhouse, and then the, and uh, uh, then the Arthur Anderson, and the Arthur Young, and uh, uh, the Toshiro, and, uh, uh, and uh, so, and uh, and then, uh, 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 yeah, I mean the uh, the senior partner Don Perry took got my letter. He said, "Okay, John, <laughs> come to my interview," <laughs> and they. Talk with with my professor and I got very high recommendation by them. So, and so he gave me a job. So I start working for them. What company was this again? Uh, an accounting firm, CPA uh, firm. C okay. CPA firm, okay. Working for them, I'm a CPA what firm. Was it, what was the name? 
li uh, Librand, Ross oh, Library. Brothers, okay, right. Uh, okay. L Y B R A N D. Right. Okay. Ross well, Brothers and uh, Montgomery. And the Montgomery is a Colonel, Colonel Montgomery, okay. Where were and they located? Uh, they're in, 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 in Boston. Oh, okay. All they, right. they originated in Boston. Okay. That's where the original office, okay. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so, so, so my hope is, okay, I work in the daytime with them. I work write my thesis at night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that was my plan, okay? And uh, then I also get to support my wife. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, that was my plan. You can, you can do that. Yeah, okay. Well, and what happened, uh, when I got, got involved, I got so much involved with my work <laughs> I bring, like, there was no time to even, I, I think about what I did in the daytime <laughs> at night. And, uh, That's a pretty heavy schedule. Yeah, it's a yeah. very heavy schedule, right. yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, they, uh, well, they liked my work pretty well, <laughs> so I started with, uh, at the bottom, and the next year I became a senior auditor and a senior consultant over there, and it was pretty fast. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, one job, not a small job, the Hotel Mif Hotel Mif I was in charge of the whole thing, you know, in the field. Uh, yeah, uh, the second year, okay. And uh, then the uh, Cabot, and it's an old company, utility company, and the Carbon Black Family. Uh, well, I became so involved with them, and uh, there's no time to write my thesis, and I have to, to see them that I decided, wait, well, that's not right. <laughs> I, uh, I went back to Harvard, I said, I can't, uh, I can't write my dissertation when <laughs> working. So, so they gave me. Uh, before that, I was on my own at Harvard, you see. And, uh, okay, so they, so, so they give me a, a doctoral research fellowship. Okay, so I became a doctoral research fellow at Harvard, and, uh, and uh, with that pay, so they pay me to write my dissertation, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then, that two years working at the, at the library, I, I just took a leave, I didn't quit, okay, I just took a leave. Uh, and uh, changed the, my original plan of the dissertation. I already I got half of them collected, the information I want, okay, because they can't. Uh, and uh, then by working with them, I collected more information. <laughs> Real <laughs> I just see if they are all, all correct too, okay. Right, uh, so I totally changed my original plan, I mean, of, of, of my dissertation, and I go, okay, they came back, and, uh, okay, uh, so I, 56, yeah, uh, 53 to 4, 4 to 5, okay, yeah, and 5 to 6, uh, 55, end of, I mean, the middle, I mean, the 4, 55, went back, and, uh, so, I so I'm doing, making good progress, and uh, where I'm just about, I haven't finished yet. It's about in the process of finishing, and the Purdue started a management program. Purdue started a management program in the engineering school. We don't have a management school there, okay, in the engineering school. And uh, the MOI came to Harvard to look for a uh, uh, prospective candidate I mean, to, um, to, to help build the program. and he. And they, but he already had a right-hand man, Ron Stuckey, got an MBA from Harvard, and a PhD from at Econ here. But he was a right-hand man, and, uh, and uh, so he already designed a program, and uh, uh, that's Ron's idea, he said, two-year MBA, but he went to the two-year MBA program. There were a lot of unnecessary duplication over there. And for smart students, you don't need two years. You can do that 11 months. So he come out a, a unique 11 months program. What he did, he put all Harvard's first year required courses into one semester required here, okay? And Harvard's second year courses elective into our second semester and the summer session, okay? 
and then like all these other MBA, two-year MBA program, there are elective courses there, and you can have a choice of special field for finance, marketing. <laughs> yeah. Now that's the history, but that was, that was the original program. And then they need people to, to do the case method teaching, so they came to Harvard to recruit, and they recruit, so recruit three. Is that M. Wilder, he received M. his M. Wilder, that's right. M. Wilder was a... Was he an, a Harvard grad? No, oh. he was a Minnesota. Oh, okay. so he didn't have the Harvard experience. Stucky was the only one who had the Harvard oh, experience. Oh, he did, okay. Yeah, so he could go the only one Harvard experience. But he needed people from Harvard to, I mean, to, to carry on the program. Going. I mean, Stucky had it in mind. And so they come, came to Harvard to recruit. And uh, so, so I was invited to visit here. And uh, First after time you've ever been here, right? Yeah. <laughs> What time? Hey, the interview went very well. Okay. What time of year was this? Winter or spring? Or? Uh, fifty-six. Oh, no, but was it in warm weather or cold weather? Uh, well, very nice weather. Okay. I think like, in April. Probably. Oh, okay. In right. April, yeah, very nice. But sometimes I've talked to people who come in the winter. Say, oh boy, this is. Oh, really yeah, cold. yeah. <laughs> in, in, in April, and uh, so I made my presentation. I told them about my experience and the working experience and. Uh, and some of the things what I found, and it happened, and M. Wilder and I hit very well. But he teaches economics, and his kind of economics, he's more practical economics, okay? And so he and I, we went along very well, and then, uh, at that time... Were you the only three people then for the program at that time? Was there anybody else on the faculty? Uh, from Harvard? Uh, uh, I mean, no. There, okay, there's, there's uh, Don King oh, okay. from psychology. Which teaches human relations, okay. There's a Doc Owen who teaches, uh, he, uh, is a labor okay. uh, arbitration expert and in, in, the economic, in the economic department. Oh, yeah, we, we, we had a. So there was a core. They, they were the core, and they, uh, there is, is several accounting, one accounting professor and a few assistant professors in accounting. But they are not going to teach in the new program. They want somebody from Harvard to teach. You know, we don't, not, I mean, Harvard doesn't call accounting, okay? So my course is not called accounting, okay? <laughs> and uh, we call financial control, okay? I call financial control, or Harvard call control, okay? I'm going to call control, okay? And, uh, and we, so, uh, so I came, and I, I was interviewed by M. Wilder, and uh, I pre made my presentation to everybody. I mean, in the faculty, <laughs> and I was interviewed by Hawkins, yeah, the Hawkins Hall. And, uh, he was the dean of the engineering, and I interviewed by A.S. He was the dean of science school, because, because the economic department at that particular time. And M. Wilder was the head, was head of the economic department. And so when the new department set up, the new industrial management was in the engineering school. So he became the head of it. So, it, uh, so, so I got uh, uh, industrial engineering and, uh, and management and uh, economics like, uh, in the science school. Like, so yes, we interviewed uh, Ernest Young, Young, the like, uh, dean of the graduate school. So, uh, so I know by about three of them. Okay. Then everything went very well. And, uh, I went home, when the offer came, they offered me as associate professor to start. Okay, I, I didn't start as assistant professor because of my working experience as a senior auditor and a senior consultant a librarian, which is a, right. is a great help. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, I had that. Yeah, and, uh, and then they, they want me to come in, start in the fall, because the new program starts in the fall. I said, no, no, no. I, I, I have to finish my. I don't do it again. <laughs> oh, you're still not finished. I don't do oh, it again. Get that thing I have to, done. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm almost I mean, at that particular time, and almost about seventy percent done. Sure. But I just need to make a few. So I, so I, I, I say I, I can finish. I finish. I mean, the in the fall semester, so I can start here in the January. So okay. So it was a. My that appointment was, okay. was starting from January 57, uh, and then, okay, I, in my area, actually, in financial control, financial management, which, I mean, John, they also in the financial, so he can teach that 
the first semester for me. Okay. <laughs> so John they taught the, the first semester for me, so I teach the second semester the elective course. Because what they call your two eight T top and I can control one and uh, and uh, so that this is how I got so I so I finished my uh dissertation in time and the library was very sorry to see me <laughs> they complain <complaints> for me. <laughs> Believe it or not. They want me to teach the, their staff how to write reports. <laughs> oh my heavens. You're really a key person. <laughs> uh, very yeah. special. Okay. And An expert. Uh, this is how I come up to, okay, the first year. And, uh, oh, I didn't even have an office. Where were you located? Because Granite Stand Building was Stand to Annex. It's no longer there now, oh, okay. Okay? okay? And you, uh, you, you, you how long have you been here? Oh, over 40 years. So I know I know the building. You know, the Standard Code in the back, okay? Right. So we're at the back of Standard Code to Annex. In the front is, is all this is a big lecture hall in over there, all the ring down thing. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first came in 56, I did for the interview. No. That's right, okay? There was skeleton hanging in the biology annex. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't moved yet. They haven't told the name. It's not okay. A skeleton over there. Okay. So we are in the back of it. They gave us a one room, especially made of the King King Akumo. There about 40 students. They called bullpen. Okay. So it was a classroom there? Well, yeah. just one classroom. And the library over there, just about ha half the size of this room. Yeah. yeah. That's all they have. Did you get, but did you have an office over there? I, first semester, no. I, okay, you Dr. St. who was the head of the uh, economics department, had to retire. So he still kept his office, a desk over there. Then Ken Shaki, who, teach, who taught insurance, yeah, uh, who taught insurance, shared the room, the two offices. So uh, Shaki is on one side, and uh, S.T. So I share S.T.'s desk, but he didn't come there, so I, uh, and uh, I don't even have a, Farm cabinet, okay. So I I got eight cotton boxes of my teaching material from Harvard, okay. So I just use my co cotton boxes as my <laughs> cabinet. That's how I started. I know. We all go back to that. You know, we yeah. run out of room, and there go the Xerox boxes. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I have those too. Yeah. Well, that was very good. So you got. Where did you live when you first came? Oh, yeah. well, David Ross Road. Okay, uh, it's all torn down now. There's a bunch of World War II left over. From the war. The gas. <laughs> yeah, near <laughs> yeah, the Gulf Coast. And uh, the, I think, it, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's a national home kind of, okay. kind of thing, yeah. Uh -huh. So I, we lived there for uh, well, uh, eight months, okay, yeah, eight months, yeah. Uh, that's right. Then I bought my. I bought a house on Summit Drive and from Dr. Davis at that particular time. And uh, you know, Arthur Tishner, okay? Next to Arthur Tishner, and then uh, uh, one side Arthur Tishner, the other side of Broiler from Sweden, a phys physics professor, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, we bought a house over, over there, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's for the first few years. Don't you have this house? Can you build this yeah, one? Yeah. Okay, alrighty. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. You uh, were the first director of the master's degree program. Is that right? Tell us a little about your, when you first got started in the Cranach School. Uh, uh, what okay. were you doing? Okay, now, when you well, I just asked me to you, the initial program was started by Ron Stuckey, who got the MBA from Harvard. Okay, he copied from Harvard, he just squeezed into it. <laughs> and uh, then, so I thought, okay, after half, one semester, okay? So on my, uh, so when I proposed to them, after I taught for one semester, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, let, let me put it, okay. I look up the program, I said, not, not quite right. <laughs> we, one semester, we, what, what are we trying to do? We're trying to give, okay, quote, quote, and all the students, this is a graduate program. Correct. Yeah. It's very bright students. They're, the very, they're, they're, they're very bright. They already got an engineering degree from uh, Purdue. Okay? Either in engineering or in science. 
Okay, okay that's right. Uh -huh. That was your initial code. That's my students. initial program. No girls. Okay. <laughs> All but, boys. But the background would have been a major in engineering or science. Major and working and uh, and about uh, two thirds of them had a working experience. Okay. So okay. they were not coming right out of college. They come in, yeah, and a few of them are coming out far. Them. The majority of them already already got some working experience. I'm very bright and very and motivated. And they've come back to do the math. They came back to the, oh, they want to get a math employment, they want to get, okay. Oh yeah, they're not taking on England. And that, how we got started in the program, uh, I think General Motors hire more Purdue engineering grads than anybody else over there, okay. And uh, so they like Purdue engineers. And General anyway, Motors. Yeah, okay. that's right. And uh, uh, like whether it doesn't matter whether GM or GE or whatever other, other large American company, those engineers they graduate, they all getting more becoming more with management, if they are any good. <laughs> okay, yeah. if they stay engineering, <laughs> they are really not very good. Okay, and then they're coming back. I mean, I mean, they are motivated. I mean, they want to work hard, and they they and they can't take on very heavy load. Okay, and uh, so I suggest to the faculty. Our objective is to give graduate management education to motivate the talented engineering and science students from Purdue. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, let me put that. We cannot call MBA because at that particular time, IU had a monopoly on that. No other school. I mean, there was no MBA even I mean, for, from you know, uh, or okay, you know, Indiana State Teachers College. You know what call Teachers College? It's not even university. Before I know, yeah, I know. They have, they have business school, okay, and medical school, law school. We have agri ag school, engineering school. Right, yeah. Okay, there's so the dividing line over there. Well, we Which is what the it. mission of the land grant is. That division of land grant. Okay, uh -huh. so we cannot call MBA program or business program. That's how we that we hide in the in in, in the engineering and the management. <laughs> And the economics in the science school, they are there. <laughs> they spread That's out. That's the way they all work. University, they're just like that. All over the way, they all like that. diversified. Okay. That's right, okay. And uh, so, if our objective is to give graduate management education to this talented group, and uh, we should not waste their time uh, to have duplications and electives. And, I, and uh, they should have only one major. They should not be majoring in accounting or, or finance or marketing. They one major management period, okay. And then, and I agree with Ron Stuckey. There are duplications or unnecessary duplications of the course content, or over, I mean, not just overlapping. You know, I mean, to from the beginning, and unnecessary duplications, and uh, they should be eliminated. You know, uh, and uh, but how do we eliminate and is duplicate is academic freedom of the professors. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so I suggest every professor teaching in the program should submit his outline. <laughs> Course outline for everybody to look at it. Okay? Then the faculty as a group to decide what this particular professor is teaching his course, <laughs> okay? And then there's some build upon the others, so there's sequence, so the, the elementary things, the next step, and uh, uh -huh. And, uh, well, they bought my idea, okay? And, uh, but you need somebody to do all the coordination, the administrative coordination, so I was given the job to <laughs> And this is how I became the director of the program, okay? And actually, I also carry the tight, oh yeah, oh, let me put it this way. At the same time, M. Wilder was, okay, he just became a dean, okay. No, yeah, he just became a dean 58, okay, that's right. Yeah, but no, no, before he became a dean, this is the time they were, were discussing my program. Wharton School, you know Wharton School, Pennsylvania? The famous Part of the University yeah, of Pennsylvania. Yeah, they are uh, well known, the number one. Well, M. Wilder also was their consultant, looking over their program, management program. They're going to offer him a deanship <laughs> to go over there. Now, how did they want him to go? He 
building up this new management program, whatever, for you, okay? So, how they decided to pull the management department out of the engineering school, the economic department out of the science school, and the, he, the only one person here, same person as the head, okay, so he doesn't need to create anything. <laughs> so, yeah. make him That's the good to know thing of the new school, English management. Okay, mm -hmm. then they, uh, so, uh, then Emwala became the thing of the school, they study became associating, and he, uh, he established a very unique set up on Purdue campus, which is different from every other, uh, every other, other school. He controlled the whole school by having him held as a dean, the two associate deans, and, the, and the, he didn't have department head. He only called chairman of the policy committee. So I want to chairman of the English management policy committee. Okay. <laughs> good. This is very good because it gives the, the development of the school. And the that's right, yeah. That's really it. benefit. So he, he, he got, uh, I don't know, that's right. He got, we, 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 do, we do have three departments, okay? And, uh, uh, no, don't think I would come later on. Yeah, okay. The economics, but they only have two departments, economics and, 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 and they, they have the economics policy com committee and the English management policy committee. And, and economics professor was the chairman of their department, and I was the ch chairman of the, uh, of the uh, English management policy committee, okay? And I think the directorship came a little later on, you see, and I, I was first year, I was somewhere in the middle, and they, they said, oh, you, they want to appoint me all other, give me administrative title also, so not just the chairman. And so that's how this founding director came, you see, uh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, then, uh, okay. The program went very well. So I, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a director of the program, by okay, so I have to do, oh yeah, yeah. You know, even very few department head teachers. Okay, it will mostly become, a, so I continue to teach, continue to <laughs> run the program. I got, got two jobs at the same time. And uh, then the uh, 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 interview, I mean, the employment, I mean, the recruiting. When they come, they always want to talk to me about my students, okay? I mean, want to recommend to them, go out and everything. And then I told them, oh yeah, uh, I told them what we try to do, and then we don't, we teach them the basics, okay? We don't expect them to be the manager to start with, but we, we teach them all the basic, what a manager, need to know when he gets up there. All the, all, all the fundamentals, all that. And, and they like the concept. And, uh, and, and also, he was, I can't TPA from the camp. So I told him, I don't mind, I, we don't train CPA. They learn accounting from me through my financial control course only two semesters. Okay, and then uh, some sort of financial management course which also which is a semester and a half, okay. That, and that's all the finance accounting they know. And, uh, mm, well, anyway, they like it. <laughs> they also, since I work for them, I, I know, okay. They, right, yeah. Well, yeah, I placed a number of them with the top accounting firms, and I surprised them, my students did so well. And when they went to work for them? When they work, okay. So I, I became a senior auditor and a senior consultant, and uh, I, said I was loaned to the company to, to do <laughs> to, to the contract. Yeah. Well, my student, one of them, just in the industry, it became a pa partner in three years. Wow. Never heard of, mm. you see? And uh, then also the, another one, he, he didn't work for, yeah, he was offered by one other company, he decided to work for with constant power of uh, power and the light to in, in their budget budget department to become to be in, in charge uh, as they are preparing the budget and later on he gotta rise up and he and when he was over there and he, he took the CPA exam he said he, he passed the CPA exam he said he never 
took on all these co- except my courses, and, it, and these people don't believe it. You see, he he could do that, okay? You know, without, I mean, in an accounting program, you take a five years to learn all the CPA things. You see, you know? and uh, all the accounting you learn, know, <laughs> and that's his comment. He told me later on, he became the chairman of the board of the San Diego Gas and Electric. Later on, yeah. we come back here. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, he just lucked out. He had the yeah. smarts. Was able so, to so work. with this, so by, no, so so my program, uh, my I say my program, okay, started in the uh, fall of '58. So by 1962, she, uh, they, they also worked at a school by uh, in '58, and uh, she, uh, the, you know you, people are, call, are call, concerned about the ranking of the university, the ranking of the. Of, of, of oh, their program, rankings? yeah. Oh, okay. Chicago Tribune actually was the first one to start this ranking of the business school. So they come on, they rank it all the business based upon their information they receive from the employers, receive from the from the students. I mean, from, from the alumni or work. Okay, and then, uh, they put us on the one of the top ten business school in the country. New program on Purdue, which I <laughs> revised <laughs> in '58, and uh, so we, of course, we were, we were very happy about that. Okay, <laughs> sir, wonderful, very good, very good. Um, did, oh, oh, yeah, they, they also when Ann Water, when the visitors come, if it's academic things, he he let those academic, the, the economic department to it with. If the businessman come, I'm the one. <laughs> okay. So, so I you worked as a team. It was a team. That's right. Uh huh. And uh, then I was. He he used to. He called me Mr. MSI MSIM. Okay. That's that's the way, that's the way he introduced me to. The right. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the term yeah. he used. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Did you interact with um, Craner, Mr. Craner? Okay, okay, now, now coming to the clan, okay? okay. Uh, I talk about how big our library is, okay? <laughs> and uh, because of the political situation at that particular time, when the Purdue is not going to the Indianapolis to ask for a building for us. We have no building, and we are the last man on the totem pole in politics, <laughs> okay? And uh, what they think, oh yeah, that time, uh, civil engineering got some money. 56, 58, around those times. Uh, that's right, around okay. that, huh? And uh, civil engineering, oh yeah, look, look, uh, civil engineering was in the Grissom Hall now, that's all civil engineering built, okay? And uh, they got the money for where they are now uh, to build, so they, after that building is built, maybe we can inherit the, I mean, the old civil engineering building, now the Grissom Hall, okay? I'm not there, huh? Uh-huh. And that, that's all you know where they can plan. But anyway, we only got one classroom, and uh, I didn't even have an office, and all that. So they, uh, well they did get some money, give us some more money to expand within the back part of the Stanley Cole. Stanley Cole, the annex. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, poor little. So we, to- we 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 took over the downstairs. Okay, the first time we took over the downstairs. And uh, so instead of the, on the upstairs, get a little one whole pan. So we got two classrooms. We can expand into two classrooms and a library, okay, where the skeleton was hanging. <laughs> so I was that given be in the archives. I, I, I had a private office inside the library, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, because I was also the co chairman of the. Library committee. <laughs> uh, uh, so you need to be. Anyway, yeah, the other co chairman from the economic power, he got out of the office. Okay, so we, so we both had an office in the library. And then I started uh, when I was at the collection of the financial reports of the top 500 com- companies. Top 500, the Facebook Fortune 500, uh, the Fortune Man, top 500 companies in. In this country, so I so this was started by me uh, in the in the library, okay, which they still have now, yeah, okay, okay, not that was a wonderful me. collection. It's a wonderful yeah, yeah, collection. yeah, 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 uh, 
No, Mr. Crane, okay. <laughs> so I tell you, we are the last man on the totem pole, we can only fall, hopefully, in, inheriting from civil engineering is old building, okay. Uh, and uh, then this was in 1960, yeah, uh, 1960. And uh, well, Mr. Crane already, you know, Purdue and uh, Axco had been doing some work for them. And uh, one, oh yeah, he got a nominee fund. He, he has some bull. I mean, the, the, they happen to raise some bull <laughs> in all his farm. And uh, they're also doing some other work for me, but for Mr. Crandall's company, one of them. And uh, then first, they say, oh, we were told by the university, Mr. Crandall's company, Inland Container Corporation, would like to set up an executive development program for them. Oh, we said that's nice. <laughs> okay, maybe we, if we do well, maybe we can get a building from here, okay? And uh, so Stucky and I went on to visit with the people in Indianapolis, okay? And then I was given the job of setting up a special program, program for them. And uh, based upon what I already set up, uh, it, it was late. Okay, yeah, I think it's not every course is equal, we depend on what they need and in the academic. Customized for that. That's right, that's right. It's not, uh, we, do, we don't, just like in the MS I'm program, or not, oh, every course will be equal in terms of credit hours, but not in terms of the real time hours, okay? <laughs> so we, the, my course took more time, but on the same credit hours. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so I designed the program, uh, find out what they need, so we, I, I told them we, we will use our own professor um, own cases for the first half of the program, but, but we, then at the same time, then we're doing, and we will collect information from them inside the company and uh, to write new cases. Sure. For them to, uh, to, to yeah, so can have a That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, that, that, that was our plan, okay. And, uh, and the program was designed to run for a whole year, so not every day. So they sent them over, I think, once a month. And the two groups. Did you go down everybody. there, or did they come up here? Oh, they come up here. Okay. And then uh, we, we will put them in the, in the union. Uh, they live in the union for one, one week, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, one, well, for one week, and, uh, and uh, later. I think the class was in the Stewart Center. The class was in the Stewart Center, and the, and they live in the in the union, in, in the union building. And uh, they about halfway through. Uh, oh yeah, they, the forty people they sent us were uh, were the real middle to quite up to the not quite the, the real top five, except for the real top five. Mr. Crane, the, the five executive, so ask, take these five away from the vice president down to plan manager and uh, uh, district sales manager, okay, uh, production uh, plan manager and uh, sales uh, uh, district, 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 they call engineer, <laughs> this uh, manual. So, uh, and then about halfway through, and uh, they, they want to know what we are doing, so they invited, um, the whole, uh, the whole group, the, the, the professor was teaching me the program to make a presentation of, to tell them what we have done and what we plan to do. And uh, so, we, so we went, uh, so that meeting was in athletics club in Indianapolis. So we went on there. So, so every, 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 every professor teaching the program had a chance to present what is okay. And uh, the whole the presentation was finished in the afternoon around three o'clock or so. Uh, and after the, everybody presented, uh, Mr. Crane and uh, George Elliott, uh, Mr. Crane was uh, I mean, the chairman of the board, uh, George Elliott was the president, they came to me, John, we got some problem, if you would like to help me, oh, that I'd be glad to. So, so then I become their consultant. Okay, <laughs> this is how we got started. <laughs> so that, that's a, so it's a, it's a, uh, it's a executive development, program, this teaching program I started, then I, from that I become their consultant, 
Okay. And do you probably want to know what problem, what problem they're facing? Well, what they I'm going to have to, I'm going to admit. <laughs> yeah. what, you've got a lot to contribute, and this tape will run a little yeah. over an hour. So what I'm going to suggest, if it's okay with you, we'll stop here. Okay? okay. And then I can reschedule, I'll do part two, and we'll pick it up from there. Okay. That's a, yeah. that's a, this is a good breaking point. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. yeah. But that's okay right, with yeah. you. Okay. 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 You can look at your calendar. Uh, uh, we'll end the uh, interview. This is part one. Okay, thank you. Okay, how, how soon do you want?